Pets. Many people love them. In 2018, two out of every five people kept at least one, the most common pet being dogs. In recent years, the average number of households owning a pet has been increasing. What is it that makes keeping a pet so attractive? When getting a pet, people usually look for an animal that can be a companion or a friend. The presence of a pet at home eases the minds of many animal lovers and provides comfort when needed. Some people also keep pets for its value or for aesthetic reasons. While most people would associate positive pet traits such as easy to train, affectionate or interactive with dogs and cats, they do not realise that other animals can fit these descriptions too. Animals such as birds. People don't often consider birds to have these characteristics. Birds are often thought to be noisy and distant due to impressions formed by wild birds or songbirds, often found hung up on windows and void decks in the early 2000s. But contrary to popular belief, birds, especially parrots, can be affectionate too. Parrots are like humans. They are very bubbly, they are very cheerful, they are very playful. And they will respond to your call. And those talking ones, when you talk to them, they will respond. Some of them can really talk in sentences. Yes, I'm fine. How are you? Kikabu, how are you? Yeah, other than the bigger ones, which are only one, two syllabus kind of word. Yeah. Usually, I'll take them, just put them on my lap, cuddle them, similar to cats and dogs. They love cuddles. They love to be play with. I mean, you play with their wings, you play with their body. We do give them toys to play around with, and most of the time, the toys are woods cut woods or their wood stem. So that wood is meant for them to nibble. And naturally, out in the forested area, they will also do the same thing. Birds do bite. Usually, there's a cause of it due to tantrum, stress, and uh, they have mood swings. Pass by, then uh, came to us, wanted to touch the bird, just look attractive to them, but we still advise them that uh, the bird might bite and it may cause injury. Varys is from a white caught bird. It took me about two years to tame the bird down. He still has the wild instinct. It's hard to tame a wild caught bird, actually. For what I really feel, like small birds is like a six-year-old kids. And they will listen, but they tend to forget. So you must keep on repeating them. Okay, medium birds, like 12 years old, you know, they will listen to you. Uh, easier to learn and remember things, actually. Big parrot is like a teenager to me, about 18. For me, 18 is like, you know, they want to explore. But for us, teenagers, we want to go out more, we don't come back at night at times. So, same personally, I think virus is like 18 years old, teenagers. Different birds have different characters, different birds have different styles. So, some birds have been trained for free flying, some birds are trained for their tricks, mimicking. Mostly of the birds have been trained for companion. Birds also have the tendency to call when they are bored, seek attention, or communicate with each other. Hence, they can be quite loud. I've been keeping these parrots for quite some time. And being parrots, they are definitely like chicken. Yeah, they will call during uh, daybreak. And uh, if you have more parrots at home, definitely the sound is going to be very loud. With regards to the bird's health, some owners face problems. There are more than 80 registered veterinarians throughout Singapore. Less than 20 are qualified to treat birds. There's not many doctors around uh, Singapore who treat birds. So, there are only a few experts in this field. Most of the training that a vet undergoes is for treating cats and dogs. Hence, not many are specialised in the treatment of birds. I specialise in exotic companion mammals and I actually do see birds and reptiles. I'm certified in this species. To go down the route that I did, it involves a lot of dedication, a lot of, I guess, training post-graduation. So when we go to vet school, that's already five years, and we mainly just learn about dogs and cats. 
So when you actually graduate, then you have to start looking into doing internships and residencies and training programs, working under another specialist to actually learn about exotic animals. I think to, to do specialisation like myself, I think it just involves a lot of commitment and time. So I guess that's why there's not as many of us doing dogs and cats who bring more money. When you work with exotic species, there's not as much money in it. I personally feel that it's the way we practice medicine. Several bird interest groups in Singapore have been created to connect owners, allowing them to share tips and advice with each other. With goals like helping fellow bird owners, many of them hope to raise awareness for the medical care of birds in Singapore. I think we should have more avian doctors available because this hobby is expanding. And yeah, I understand that all these are based on demand. So this doctor availability should be more. And uh, doctors should be expert in not only cats and dogs, but also avians. When birds are sick, they are less likely to show symptoms compared to other pets. In many cases, owners only realise when it is too late. But as with all illnesses, prevention is better than cure. So when you first get an exotic species, find out exactly what that animal is supposed to eat. So sometimes the pet store might give you very superficial advice and then when you read up about it, you understand the species in more detail. So think about it like a dog and cat has been domesticated for thousands of years. Like we know what our dogs and cats need. But when you get an exotic species, for example, like a eclectus parrot, it's actually different. The nutritional needs of the eclectus parrot versus a macaw versus a cockatiel is actually very different. Exercise also plays an important role in keeping the bird healthy. Free flight is one of the few methods that owners use to ensure that their birds are active. This is when the bird is allowed to fly without restraints or clipping their wings. So I think that's really a really good concept to understand is that birds are meant to fly. Yeah, there's no denying it. There's nothing that's going to replace their free flight. So I think as owners, if we can train the birds to actually be a good bird and coming back when they're called. However, free flight is not without dangers. Some owners prefer to keep their birds caged due to the fear of losing their pet. Their bright feathers may also attract unwanted attention from predatory birds, such as crows or hawks, causing them to lose their sense of direction when chased. For those who done free flying, they might just say easy, but then the process is not that really easy. But it can be trained. You need to trust, you have confidence your bird can fly, then they might just do it. So free flying, the shock is there. So once your bird is free flying, you mean they fly from your hand and then you try to recall them and the best part was that when the bird came back to you, that's the best part. You feel like, you know, you are one of them. Many owners will prefer a strong bond with their birds before training them to free fly. Patience is also essential when doing so. Virus choose his own mates, named Aries. They flew off in the five o'clock in the evening and uh, they only came back the next day. Like for Aries, they came back the, the next morning. Uh, virus in the evening. While it is true that most birds can fly, some people assume that pet birds can be released when they are no longer wanted. If the bird is domesticated or hand-raised, there is a high chance they will not survive. Even if they survive, their release may be harmful to the local ecosystem, especially if they are not endemic to Singapore. People abandon their birds, maybe due to health. Some people, you know, they might just have asthma uh, because bird produce dander. Secondly, it's because of their noise level. Maybe they are poops too. And then maybe complain from neighbours. They just abandon their pets like that. Which I think is not a very good way. Definitely, I feel very sad. Even cats or dogs, you know, people just letting them go. Like, that's like that was like, I mean, it's totally irresponsible. There's uh, Facebook, Instagram, IG, all this kind of thing. So what they need to do is repost tell other people to rehome them, you know. Places like the SPCA takes in sometimes lost or unwanted animals, or you have the end parks, they have an animal management centre. So a lot of birds, if they're abandoned or lost, they would go there. Owning a pet comes with many responsibilities and is not to be taken lightly. Before getting a pet, one needs to do their own research before deciding which is the best pet for them. Animals are not toys and should not be treated like one. Abandoning pets can cause trauma to the animal while endangering their lives. Actually, my birds, they are like family to me. Even my son and my daughter, my wife too, are into parrots. So we take care of these pets like our own son. Okay, Ryder, even though he's a wild-caught bird, 
but he's very cuddly to me. He's a one man bird, so only me and him only we can interact. When people keep pets, most keep them for companionship. Birds are no different from dogs or cats. They can be as loyal and affectionate as other animals. Animals are undeserving of discrimination and should not be treated differently.